Now, when you go up to a door that has the labels hidden, you can't really even tell that it's a door that has been locked unless it's actually locked. Since I'm a police officer and I'm the job, I can press E and then you hear the click and then E again and it closes. Now, going up to a door that has the item restriction, this is one of them. As you can see, the item that I have sets as the item that allowed me to actually use this door is on the ground. Now, you notice that it doesn't say E at all, it just says unlocked. Now, since it's unlocked, I can actually go through, of course, both ways. Now, to show that you can have any item here, I put a burger bun. So I grab this, you can immediately see that it actually says E. Now, if I drop it again, if I don't have this, I cannot control, like, lock and unlock the store. I have it, press E. Now it's locked, press E, now it's unlocked. Now also the range of the store is set to two. You could set it to one if you wanted to be really close, because as you can see, I was over here and I could I still unlock it, unlock it. If you want to be close, make sure you set it to one and not two. Now, when you go up to a door, because we saw a door that had the hidden labels, this is a normal door. It just says E locked, you press E, and it's unlocked. You don't need to be anything else besides the requirement you put on. So if it's a job requirement, like a police, you put police. If it's a gang, you put the gang. So if it's like uh, Vagos, you put Vagos. If it's an item, you put the item. But besides that, if you don't, and you make sure that the label isn't hidden, you can actually see it and press E and go in and go out. Now, if you don't have the label hidden on the doors, you can actually change the label. So within the slash door config, it's got the door label. This is what the door label is. Door label. <laughs> As you can see, it's just door label. There is no E. Because I could still press E and the door opens and then locks as well. So in order to enable the setting, you got to go into the config file and enable, if it's not already set to true, enable false to true so you can actually get those labels. Now, if you want to change it where the item ID if I have the burger bun, if you want to have it where the burger bun actually gets used when you use the item on the door, you have to go into the config file, go into the consumables, and change or add, because it says ticket or whatever, you can change slash add those and the number to be how many are consumed and what item is consumed when you actually press E on that door. So if you have a special key card for one of the doors and it's only one type of key card use or takes two key cards for whatever reason for like a double door maybe uh you can have that as the item when you do slash new door now there is a few ways where you can get the door hash for me i only know two ways and it can get a little aggravating both ways because for the first way that i'll show you i'm using qb admin menu so if you don't have that if you have something else that will reveal you i'll go into entity view mode will view, uh, reveal you the display objects info. You can actually go up to the doors and see that this door right here, you can see the distance, I'm going uh, farther and closer, that this is the door. And the model hash is right at the top, and NTID, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you want to make a new door, you can make sure you're close to it because the numbers do get a little small and it gets a little confusing. You can do, of course, slash new door, and then copy this stuff from right here, the model hash, you copy it right there. Keep in mind, there is a different way as well, and this could get a little tiresome. I recommend also copying these numbers. It is a little annoying, but if you copy these numbers down, you will be able to reference these numbers later, especially if you know what door this is, what type of door this is, if you actually like get all that down, or go to one of the websites that give you the models and the hash and all that extra stuff. Make sure you have that, because the faster you can go through these doors on all your interiors, or wherever that you know you want to place doors or whatnot you have to be as fast as possible you don't want to take the longest because this is easy to do but there's like 50 doors so it's going to take you a hot minute if it's taking a while to get that model hash and or just set the doors up in whatever way that you're trying to set them up now there's another way you can enable free mode a uh, free aim mode which is you just got to be good with it because what i'm meaning here also it saves lag and you know it doesn't lag you out because you're not seeing all that stuff but you can copy with a free aim mode you can 
look at it, and then copy the model number, which is a little bit easier to see. Paste this in a notepad somewhere because this gives you all the information you need for the set door. And that's important because it gives you the model hash. So it gives you all the goodies that you need. So if you're copying and pasting all this down into a text document or wherever you're saving it, because there's going to be multiple doors like this, you can go copy that number, that model uh, hash, and then paste it in when you do slash new door now the reason why this is annoying is because if you press e or g you will freeze slash delete the entity so if you're going in here and you're pressing those keys a lot or just by accident you will delete the door and if that happens no worries because i already did that and i deleted this one over here but it's here because i restarted the server now to actually set a new door you go up to a door i'm using the slash make sure you get your god modes you know you get your permissions and everything if not then you're not able to do this so keep that in mind do slash new door boom and it brings up the see why it's a little confusing with this that's why it's a little like good but not good at the same time but it gives you the id now the config file name where is the config files well the config files is over here so if you go over to the config files you will see the names of where the config file name is so if you name the files according to the building that you're in you won't get confused on what doors they are and you don't have to go through digging through all those config door files trying to figure out which doors are which i actually recommend over time i find it to be better to have in it where you have one config file per floor could be good but if you want to have it where each door has its own config file make sure you do like mrpd underscore what type of door this is we're at the break room so break if you want to be you know full with it break room because for me i can understand this would be the break break room this could be one because if there's multiple doors this is the first door then second and third um if it's double you can put double in here but doing that really is super easy to go back reference like oh that's that okay so i can change all that extra stuff within the config file uh because if you want to do that i find it would be easier to edit that stuff because you can't do slash new door on a door that's already created you got to either delete that config file or go in and actually edit that config file but if you're making a new door so like this is break room one unique identifier this is right here so negative one four four okay so door label i can have a door label here so if i wanted this to say break room on left hand side i can but i'm not going to i really do prefer the door lock slash unlock also door type this is a single door double door single sliding door double sliding door garage very important to keep that in mind. Uh, now, job authorization. That means whatever job, like the police, if I do slash set job ID, so my ID's, I think, three right now, or whatever, one, and I do police, all lowercase, and I set my grade to whatever grade, that police job auth authorization, it works off of the police. So if you want to have different ranks, so I'm, this is like my mayor character. So if I want the mayor to only go through the break room, I have to actually make a mayor job in order to set this job authorization in this way. I could do it a different way. There's these options down here. So keep that in mind because depending on how many people are on that set job or doing said things, you don't want it to be where only the mayor does that unless you want it to. It just really depends because over here, you could set it to the citizen ID. I could grab my citizen ID. I'm the mayor. No one else is going to be mayor for a good bit. Put this here. And when the mayor changes, you can add that, edit that through the config file. To save time, you don't do that because then you got to edit the cit uh, citizen IDs each time the person is changed on their set job. Now, that's where item authorization is a little bit more handy with that because you can have any item, create a new item, use a pre-existing item, whatever. And like, I can make this burger bun so if i have the burger bun i can go through this and i can make it burger bun mayor and be mayor's burger bun it's only i who have the burger bun go through the break room and eat my burgers i can do that because if you have this as police then they could also you can set that as well but they also be able to go through if i had if they had that same item the burger underscore bun underscore uh mayor that's where this gets a little more advanced here, depending on how you want to set your jobs up and how you want certain people to go through certain areas. Uh, you also got your max distance, which I have been using too for this video, which is pretty far. But depending, again, your doors and how you want to do it, I recommend one or two. And then also, you got your settings down here. Big, 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 big. Because locked. Of course, it's going to be locked. So locked immediately. Lock pickable. 
So if, uh, of course, if someone's got a lockpick that is a lockpick and it has the ability to lockpick, then they can actually lockpick this door even though it's actually locked. Can't unlock. The door stays locked and it can't be unlocked. Then you also have hide door label. This is big because with some other tutorials out there regarding this type of door lock system, I've seen a lot of people just click this and say click this. I mean, that's good and all, but no one really explains if you click this button, it will remove that UI over here. It has nothing to do with your config settings. It is just this setting right here, door door config settings that are in the config folder, but your actual QB door lock add-on, that config file, that doesn't matter because, well, matter for this because this is where you actually change setting on and off. So if, if you have a door where you can lock it and unlock it, but you're not seeing the UI, make sure the hide door label is checked off and I press submit. Now, you gotta have your gun or whatever gun with you because you gotta aim at the door. So, in order to give yourself a gun, do slash give item, your ID, uh, and then the weapon name. So, weapon underscore vintage pistol, weapon underscore pistol, weapon underscore SMG, I think. If you gotta look for that stuff, look up for the uh, model names for the weapons. Spawn one of those, left click, and then you just set the door. And then you can walk up to the door, press E. Oh, I just... <laughs> Good that I did that, because free aim mode. When you have it enabled and you press E, you delete the entity. And so here, so unlocked, unlocked. It does work. To actually set a door, a double door, door label, I don't want a door label. This is not a single door. This is not a double sliding door. This is just a double door. There's no, it's not sliding. It's just opening. Sliding door. Double sliding door would be pillbox type of doors, um, where they actually open, shh, open type stuff. This isn't, so double door. It already saved my settings from doing the doors before, so that's why I said it's best to work your way from the front door to the back door, so you can kind of keep all the settings for that stuff, and then work your way to the other areas. I'm actually going to keep this to one. Oh, my bad, I had to actually recreate this because since I got out of the menu, I had to go back in and re-input in the information. A little annoying, that's why copy and pasting is good because I would have just copy and pasted without having to retype in. Now we're good, now we can actually aim, and as you can see, we can actually aim at both doors. So boom, and then boom. Now we got that double door set, as you heard. Click, click, because I was shooting, but I don't have ammo. So if I go up to the doors, oh, I'm not, oh I just <laughs> I did it again. I got free aim mode, mode on, so it deleted it the actual door, but as you can see, it is unlocked. Now if I lock it, if this door was there, I would not be able to go through, and then unlocked.